So, Cuphead, huh? When I made my video on Enchanted Portals a few months back, I truly, truly thought it would be a quick one and done blip in the channel's history, and I would just move on. Well, I was wrong about that. Very wrong. Not only did that video do way better than I ever thought it would, but shortly after the release of that video, not one, but two different Cuphead clones were brought to my attention. The first of these is The Last Cup, which looks interesting. <laughs> the characters look like weird Cuphead Sonic OCs, and the animation is pretty questionable across the board. However, the backgrounds actually look really nice, and there's always a chance this game could be fire. Guess we'll just have to wait and see on that front. Although, putting Cup in the title of your Cuphead clone might be the most on-the-nose thing of all time, so my hopes are not very high. However, this video is not about the last cup, which should have been obvious considering one, it doesn't look illegal, and two, isn't even out. How would I even talk about it? <laughs> no. The game we're talking about today is the other Cuphead clone that was brought to my attention, although this one was a couple months after the whole Enchanted Portals thing. A Cuphead clone that's so bad, so ugly, so soulless, that it makes Enchanted Portals look like how Cuphead looks to Enchanted Portals, if that even makes sense. The game we're taking a look at today that has been the talk of the town in the Cuphead community is none other than Rubber Hose Rampage. No, you're not having a stroke. That is Mickey Mouse as the playable character in this game. That's right, we're going there. Strap in everyone, it's time for an exciting episode of Oh uh, Yeah Talks About Copyright in the Public Domain for like 20 minutes, then you hit the subscribe button. I don't know how that last part got in there, but uh, something tells me you should listen to it. Oh uh, yeah, you know, hit subscribe, hit subscribe. Actually, scratch what I said like two seconds ago. I'm gonna need you to unbuckle your seatbelt real quick because I just realized I have more stuff to talk about. This video is about much more than just Rubber Hose Rampage and what my thoughts on it are. This video is going over everything, or at least most of everything. We're talking about the dev a little bit, the actual game, and more importantly, just how illegal Rubber Hose Rampage actually is. Now, because we're talking about law, which is a big scary topic, I just want to make sure I am crystal clear here. This video is for entertainment purposes only. This is not a definitive legal look at Rubber Hose Rampage. Even if there is potentially stuff in the game that could be seen as illegal, I highly doubt it get taken down anyway. Because realistically, who actually cares? <laughs> this is a $5 game on the Windows Store made by one guy. It's not the end of the world if it steps on the toes of a multi-billion dollar corporation or two. Also, I'll probably get some stuff wrong in this video, just putting that out there right now. So, once again, entertainment purposes only. We're just here to talk a little bit. We'll obviously go over more of this during the actual video you're about to watch, but I just wanted to get that out of the way as soon as possible. Just keep in mind that it's not that serious and we're just here to laugh and have a good time. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, I kindly ask you to pick up that seatbelt and strap in again. This is a story of copyright, the public domain, and a Cuphead clone that may or not be impossible for a human to beat. Not joking about that, by the way. We'll talk about it later. This is the potentially illegal, potentially impossible Mickey Mouse Cuphead clone, Rubber Hose Rampage. All right, where do I even start with all this? <laughs> Rubber Hose Rampage was announced on January 1st of this year, which if you didn't know for some reason after all the media attention it got, this was the date that Mickey Mouse finally entered the public domain, after years of Disney finding legal loopholes and workarounds to keep the mouse in the mouse house. As long as the Mickey Mouse design being used came directly from the Steamboat Willie short film, using Mickey Mouse in any commercial product was officially fair game. When anything popular enters the public domain, it's safe to assume a wave of slop trying to capitalize on it is soon to follow. Something similar happened when Winnie the Pooh entered the public domain a few years ago, which gave us such masterpieces as the horror film Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. When it came to Mickey Mouse, however, zero time was wasted getting said slop out to the public. The day the rat entered the public domain, multiple horror films and games were announced immediately. What's up guys and welcome to Captain Willy. Now this is a brand new Steamboat Willy horror game where apparently we're working on Captain Willy's ship and uh, things go horribly wrong. <laughs> It was truly a wild day to be on the internet, I'll just say that. However, the crown jewel of all Mickey Mouse slop actually flew under the radar for a few weeks until it finally started getting attention. Of course, I'm talking about Rubber Hose Rampage. The trailer for the game featured traced animations, jank gameplay, and a completely broken aesthetic style consisting of stock image backgrounds and the titular Rubber Hose animation style. Now, 
As soon as I saw this game, I knew it was something special. So I made a video on my second channel going over the trailer and giving my quick, unscripted thoughts about it. This actually prompted a response from the dev, which was pretty funny, not gonna lie. The game already had a Steam page up when I first saw it, which stated that it would be dropping in early February. So I waited patiently for Game of the Year to finally drop, so I could play it for myself. After a long and painful wait, the day finally arrived. However, when the countdown on the Steam page ended, the game never released. I waited some more, but had no luck. Rubber Hose Rampage did not release. At least, not on Steam. Under everybody's noses, the game had actually released about a day earlier than expected over on the Microsoft Windows Store of all places. So if the game was finished and released already, why didn't it drop on Steam? Well, for those who don't know, when releasing a game on Steam, you need to pass a series of approvals in order for your game to be sold on the Steam storefront. However, for some reason, you're allowed to have a Steam page up and running with an active release date before the approval process is finished. In the case of Rubber Hose Rampage, and this is coming straight from the dev by the way, the game will automatically be released on Steam as soon as the game passes the approval phase. There is so much trash and shovelware on Steam, so I just find it funny that out of all games, Rubber Hose Rampage made them stop and take a closer look. Who knows if it'll ever actually release on Steam at this point, but I'd say it's probably unlikely. In fact, a uh, yeah from the future here, I have a bit of an update on this situation. And by update, I mean there is no update. The damn game still isn't out on Steam. I wrote pretty much everything you've heard up until this point back in February, and now it's fucking March. The page is still up, but they refuse to clear the game for approval. Rubber Hose Rampage is literally stuck in a never-ending Steam purgatory, which is probably the funniest outcome being real. But forget about all that. We have the handy-dandy Windows Store. I genuinely hate buying stuff on here. It just feels wrong, but anything for Rubber Hose Rampage, right? So after weeks of waiting, having to buy it on a platform other than Steam, and hyping myself up for a banger-ass game, let's see what Rubber Hose Rampage is all about is what I would say if I could even fucking beat this game. <laughs> All right, I've pretended for long enough that this video is a gameplay breakdown. It's not about that because I can't beat the fucking game. <laughs> Rubber Hose Rampage is one of the most unfair, downright impossible games I have ever had the experience of playing. For reference, to my knowledge, not a single person has uploaded a video of the entire game without cheating in some way, shape, or form is what I would say if this was February, but it's March now and things have changed. All right, so apparently the game received a patch at some point in between when I started working on this video and now, which made the game just possible enough to finally beat it. I am like, genuinely convinced the release version of the game is impossible. Huge shout out to Flembonds for not only covering the game on release, but also beating the patched version of the game. So yeah, the game is technically not impossible, but I'm still under the impression that the launch version of the game probably is impossible, if not nearly impossible. Anyway, all the footage you're seeing from me in this video, I used Cheat Engine to get it. And once again, huge shout out to Flembonds, who I painstakingly watched learn Cheat Engine on stream so I could do it myself. That program is genuinely archaic, bro. Not every boss is unfair, but it's definitely the majority of them. And I absolutely could not have gotten some of this footage without cheating. Reminder that this is all pre-patch, by the way. Maybe I could beat it all now, but I kind of never want to open Rubber Hose Rampage ever again. So we are not doing that. <laughs> I knew almost right away after playing the first couple bosses that this video could not be like my Enchanted Portals video. As much as I'd love to break this game down boss by boss and tell you why it sucks, I'd feel stupid doing that for a game I couldn't even beat. No, this video is about something completely different than the Enchanted Portals video. We're going head first into the legality of this shit. As you can tell from just looking at any boss in this game, all the animations are traced from existing Rubber Hose cartoons. The safe thing would be to assume that all the cartoons being traced here are also in the public domain like Mickey Mouse. But even with that in mind, I still see a lot of people call this game the illegal Cuphead clone. So I wanted to test that claim and just see how illegal Rubber Hose Rampage truly is. So I worked with a group of people, shout out Cam and Trumu, tirelessly for days to find almost every single animation that was traced to make this game. Yes, we are crazy. <laughs> Some of them were pretty easy to find, while others were definitely a bit of a fucking nightmare, let's just say that. So I've taken it upon myself to go through each and every source we found and find out once and for all how much of Rubber Hose Rampage is actually in the public domain. Here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna go over each of the 21 bosses in this game in order of appearance, 
talk a little bit about the content of the fight from a visual and gameplay standpoint sometimes, then we'll get into where it's traced from and if it's actually legal to use. I feel like the answers for some of these will genuinely surprise you all, and it should be a fun time making fun of this awful Cuphead clone while we're learning about the history of some of these rubber hose cartoons. So yes, I will be talking a little bit about the gameplay, but considering I couldn't even beat the game, this isn't the focus here. Now that we have that out of the way, instead of hopping into the first boss of the game, I actually want to talk about the playable characters themselves, Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Okay, so obviously the depictions of these characters are completely legal within the context of the public domain. Some of you may be thinking that Mickey needs his iconic steamboat hat in order to actually be public domain, but he actually loses that hat pretty early into the short, so no hat for Mickey is fair game. Obviously, Mickey Mouse isn't the issue here, which is very weird to say out loud, gonna be real. There is an issue here, however. These are literally just edited Cuphead sprites. If you were to overlay these two character sprites, you would immediately see that the entire body of Mickey and Rubberhose Rampage is taken straight from Cuphead. So it's safe to assume the rest of the sprite sheet is also probably taken from Cuphead as well. The main difference here is obviously the head and the fact that they hold a gun instead of shooting from their fingers. But still, there's no way this is legal, right? Cuphead is easily the furthest away from entering the public domain compared to everything else being used. And I'm just surprised that the Microsoft Store of all places allowed this game to go up. You know, considering that Cuphead is literally owned by them. The gameplay moveset is also identical to Cuphead's, which obviously they don't own technically, but it just adds to everything else here. So yeah, using Mickey Mouse, A-okay. Stealing Cuphead sprites, probably not. I'm just gonna assume that one is probably a no-go. With that elephant finally out of the room, we can now move on to the actual interesting part of this video. Just how legal are the bosses in Rubber Hose Rampage? Number one, Flight of the Bumblebee. This boss features a stretched out stock image of a transparent PNG of a beehive, but that's not what we're here to talk about. No, we're talking about what's inside the hive the actual bee boss itself. Huge shout out to Reverse Image Search for somehow working when actually trying to find the origin of this one, but the animation being traced here comes from a 1942 short called Eaten on the Cuff of the Moth Who Came to Dinner, which is about a bunch of bugs in a house or something. <laughs> the bees start sword fighting with their stingers at some point, which is where the animation from Rubber Hose Rampage is traced from. Now, is this short in the public domain? Probably your first and my first thought was that of course it wasn't. Steamboat Willie, which dropped in 1928, literally just entered the public domain. How would this short be part of that if it came out nearly 20 years later? Well, this leads me to the wild world of companies sometimes just don't give a fuck and don't renew copyright for old works. This short actually entered the public domain a long time ago, back in the 1970s surprisingly. If Warner Bros, the company that published this short, bothered to renew the copyright, it would still be out of the public domain to this very day. But I guess they just thought it wasn't worth it. You're going to be hearing this explanation a lot moving forward. A good chunk of these animations just never got their copyright renewed. Speaking of... Number two, the Little Piggy incident. All right, off rip, I just wanna talk about how incredibly bullshit this boss fight is. This is the fight that made me quit trying to beat this game legit. The first phase, easy as hell, no issues there. The second phase though, good fucking luck, buddy. The amount of unfair, insane bullet spam on this part is incredibly dire. Luckily, I don't have to talk about this stupid boss fight anymore. Instead, I get to talk about this jolly little $25 at the state fair piggy dancing on the bottom of the screen. Look at this pig. No, seriously, just look at him. Take a look at him. Take a nice look at this pig, okay? What are your immediate thoughts about this pig? Do they look like any specific character? Do they remind you of somebody? If you said Porky Pig, you'd be wrong. No. This is actually traced from the iconic character of one of the three little pigs from 1943's The Three Pigs in a Polka, specifically pig number two. Right, so let's talk about this. As you could probably tell from the art style, this is a Looney Tunes short, which is also why the pigs in this look almost identical to Porky Pig. This short lost its copyright and entered the public domain the same way the last one did. So even though the character of Porky Pig isn't public domain, these three little pigs that look literally the exact same or in the public domain. I was like, hard convinced this was gonna be the first case of a legal boss, but Rubber Hose Rampage is still clean, for now. Here's the weird part about this boss though, the iconic two on this pig shirt was completely removed when they traced it for Rubber Hose Rampage. However, 
They didn't just leave the shirt blank. The dev decided to put a new design on the shirt of the pig. Reverse image searching said design reveals that it's the logo for a band called the String Cheese Incident. No changes or anything. It is literally the exact same logo. The name of this boss fight, which is very funny by the way, is a play on the name of this band. So this brings me to a new question. Is this legal? Like, it can't be legal to just use the logo of an existing band in a video game, right? It's not like the band is inactive or something. They're going on tour this year. Maybe the symbol comes from a stock image library or something, but every Google search result I found links it straight to the band. We'll leave this as an I don't know for now. Maybe the dev personally asked the band if he could use the logo. Who knows, man? That probably didn't happen, but you gotta keep an open mind for shit like this. Anyway, enough of the little piggy incident. Let's move on. Number three, Waltz of the Flowers. This is another fucking terrible bullet spam boss fight where said boss moves back and forth in the bottom of the screen the entire time, which also describes like 90% of the fights in this game. Not a joke, by the way. This game is next level dire. Anyway, this boss has three different phases that each have wildly different looks, but don't worry, we found them all. Starting with phase one, this small dancing flower thing comes from 1935's Kami Color Cartoon Summertime. This one is a little weird, but as far as I can tell, this short is in the public domain. The guy who made it, UB Iwerks, used to work at Disney before splitting off and making a set of 25 cartoons on its own. The details on the ownership of these cartoons is kind of up in the air, as MGM might own them since they worked as a distributor for some of the shorts, but regardless, I doubt they would even bother renewing copyright. I think it's safe to say that any of the Kami Color cartoon shit is probably free reign, although questionably so. We'll give that one a maybe, but leaning towards it being in the public domain. The other two phases actually come from the same source, thankfully. A source that may be a real first illegal thing in Rubberhose Rampage. These two phases are traced from another 1935 short called Flowers for Madame, which is a Looney Tunes short owned by Warner Brothers. However, unlike the other Warner Brothers stuff that I've talked about so far, as far as I can tell, this short is not in the public domain. I've checked countless lists and done multiple Google searches, but as far as I can tell, this short is still very much owned by the WB. Since I didn't get a clear 100% answer though, we'll classify this as another maybe, but heavily leaning towards it not being public domain, although I'm not 100% sure, obviously. There's definitely a chance it could be public domain. I could have missed something, but this is definitely the first sus thing. Ignoring the band logo, I guess. <laughs> no, seriously, what was up with that? Number four, Pastoral Symphony. This boss is really fucking weird. The chicken in it becomes like a UFO or something. I don't know, man, this game is weird. But who cares about that? Is the chicken in the public domain? The chicken comes from a 1930 short called Swing You Sinners, which was done by Max Fleischer. I feel like this is a really iconic cartoon of the era, even if I had never watched it before making this video. I had definitely seen clips of it before though. Anyway, as far as I can tell, this short is in the public domain. The internet archive says it is, and I can't find any real sources saying the contrary. So if anyone in the audience wants to make a video game starring this stupid chicken, go ahead, sell it for $1,000 on a Steam storefront, or the Windows Store. Probably the window store. <laughs> Number five, Spring Song. Cow goes back and forth on screen and does funny dance. Just peak boss design, come on guys. Said cow is from a 1935 short called Molly Moo Cow and the Indians, which is probably most definitely racist in some way, probably. Same deal here as a lot of these shorts. No copyright renewal was ever done here. So as far as I'm aware, this one is public domain. Number six, Camel Walk. Camel goes back and forth and spits green shit at you. Haha, ha, I love this game. I was like super positive this one was original for a little bit, specifically because the line work is super shaky and the animation is kind of nothing. But they do in fact come from something, an animated short called Gypped in Egypt from 1930. This short is from the Waffles the Cat and Dawn Dog series of cartoons, which you've probably never heard of before in your entire life. I think that says enough about how successful these characters ended up being in the long run. Anyway, Obviously, this short is now public domain due to ownership being wonky and no copyright renewal being done. The sun in this boss fight is also from that Kami Color Summertime short we talked about earlier. Number seven, My Boxing Kangaroo. Big fan of how this boss fight features a stock image of a koala as a main enemy in this fight. Really just puts on full display how dire Rubberhose Rampage's art style truly is. <laughs> anyway, the kangaroo in this fight surprisingly comes from a source that actually predates Steamboat Willie. This makes it the first thing on this list that is definitively 100% in the public domain. Zero funny business. The source is 1920's The Boxing Kangaroo, which is kind of crazy considering it is literally over a hundred years old. So yeah, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Number eight, the Lizard. 
Going from 1920 all the way up to 1940, we have this lizard boss. The source for this one is a Warner Bros. animation called Cross Country Detours, but there's probably a significantly higher chance you recognize this animation from a YouTube compilation of the sexiest cartoons ever produced by mankind. In fact, it's genuinely kind of hard to find the full short on YouTube, but it's damn easy to find uploads of the lizard scene on the contrary. In regards to if this short is in the public domain or not, this is probably the one I am the most up in the air about. I couldn't really find a concrete source saying that it entered the public domain, however, I did see some stuff saying it was part of it. This is another maybe. I could very easily see this short getting roped in with the Little Piggies one, and never getting its copyright renewed, for some reason. So this one is probably fine. Probably. Number 9, Ride of the Owls. This one is likely just comprised of traced stock art, so I can't really say anything about it. It's almost 100% fine though. The only thing to note is that the moon in this boss comes from a 1902 short film called A Trip to the Moon, which is obviously public domain. Number 10, The Charleston. I'm just gonna be straight up about this one, we could not find the source for this boss fight at all. The issue with this one is that there is a very high chance that the animations being traced here are from a completely unrelated short from the desert theme of this boss fight. When you reverse image search it, this is not a joke, you get fucking pictures of Jumbo Josh instead. I cannot escape you. So yeah, if anyone at home recognizes this random animation that has been given to this stupid cactus, drop a comment so we can figure out this mystery for good. Realistically though, this one is probably fine. The actual character design here is definitely original, and there is a higher chance that the animation is from a public domain source than not. Anyway, we're now about halfway through the bosses that Rubberhose Rampage has to offer. Let's do a quick mid-video recap before we dive into the next section. We went over 10 bosses, 7 of which were made by tracing public domain Rubberhose cartoons. We had one boss which used a source I wasn't sure of and left up in the air, one boss that we literally could not find the source for, and one single boss that maybe used copyrighted material. Oh, and a band logo, which is still debatably the most illegal thing featured thus far, I'm not gonna lie. For everyone calling this the illegal Cuphead clone, there sure hasn't been a lot of illegal content yet. But like I said, we're only halfway through this. Anything could happen. Let's keep going. Number 11, Samurai Lion. I haven't actually talked about the actual game for a bit, but that changes right now because holy shit this boss is evil. The first couple phases are the usual jank this game offers with its iconic run back and forth boss patterns, but the last phase is genuinely insane. The titular Samurai Lion flies into the air and spams ninja stars. It is such an incredibly small window to survive during this that I salute anyone who is crazy enough to actually do it. Fuck that noise, I am not doing this one ever. Anyway, how illegal is this thing? Well, surprisingly, the source for this one does not come from a normal rubber hose cartoon and instead comes from one of the earliest animes ever produced. It's 1939's Benkai Tai Ushiwaka. This short has been redistributed on collections of old public domain anime before, so I am fairly confident it is public domain. The thing is, the only parts that are taken from this short for Rubberhose Rampage are the body and the weapon of the samurai guy. The whole lion head is either traced from something completely different, or is their attempt to make a Rubberhose style character. Either way, it's just one weird Frankenstein combo of things. Definitely copyright free though. Number 12, The Monkey Doodle Doo. This one is interesting because I really don't know if it falls under the public domain or not. It's one of those ones where finding a clear answer to it is really hard just because of how old and barely documented this shit is. I'm leaning towards no, but I actually have no solid answer. Regardless, the source for this boss is a 1937 short called Swing Monkey Swing. For the time, this short is actually quite well put together and the animation is really charming. Just a fun one all around, but the jury's still out of its public domain or not. Number 13, The Dancing Bear. Okay, this is one of the very few bosses on this list that I am leaning super hard towards the source not being in the public domain. We'll talk about it and you can come to your own conclusion, but here are the facts. You probably all know about Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. He was a character created for a series of animated shorts in the 1920s by Walt Disney for Universal Pictures. This was obviously before Walt went on to create his own company. When Walt went on to create said company, he wasn't able to take Oswald with him, which led to the creation of Mickey Mouse to fill that void Oswald left. But just because Walt left Universal Pictures didn't mean that they would just stop making Oswald cartoons. There are a series of post-Walt Disney Oswald shorts created by Universal Pictures to try and retain the character's popularity, which didn't end up going all that well. Eventually, Eventually, years later, Disney was able to get the rights for Oswald back, and it's safe to assume that Disney got ownership of all the old Oswald shorts along with him. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, how does this actually have to do with Rubberhose Rampage? Well, 
the dancing bear on this boss fight, is actually Pete. But not the public domain Steamboat Willie Pete, no. This is a direct trace from a 1930s Oswald short called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit in Hell's Heels. Because this short came out in 1930, and we can assume Disney probably still owns the copyright to it, because it's fucking Disney, this is potentially our first almost certain case of something in this game not being public domain. You may be thinking, oh, well Pete the character is public domain, so shouldn't this be fine? And the answer to that would be no. Only the versions from the shorts that came out in 1928 or prior are in the public domain. Every design that was created in the future from that point are still not on the table for free use. I'm surprised it took this long, but we finally have a pretty hard case against one of these boss fights. You can say whatever you want about this game or its dev, but you can't say they didn't at least try to do their homework when it came to public domain sources. At least to an extent, anyway. With that out of the way, let's go through the rest of these bosses real quick and wrap this up. Number 14, for Elise. The source on this boss is 1930's Looney Tunes Congo Jazz, which lost its copyright due to no effort being made to renew it. I haven't talked about gameplay for a minute, so I guess I should at least try and catch you up to speed here. Okay guys, you are not gonna believe this, but this boss walks, runs, and jumps on the bottom of the screen for the entire fight. Truly earth-shattering gameplay going on in Rubber Hose Rampage. Number 15, The Big Bad Wolf. Exact same source as that pig boss from earlier, nothing else to say here, other than it is indeed in the public domain. Next, number 16, Night on Bald Mountain. This is, for once, kind of an interesting boss layout-wise. Like, it's not the same back and forth shit pretty much every other boss fight has had, so that's a plus. Anyway. The witch in this boss comes from a 1933 Betty Boop short called Snow White. The weird thing about this one is that Betty Boop as a character has not entered the public domain yet, however multiple shorts with her in it have entered the public domain according to multiple sources, such as this Snow White short we're talking about now. So I'm assuming the characters in the short that aren't Betty Boop are fair game, but Betty Boop herself is still under copyright until 2026. Oh, and Felix the Cat is here for some fucking reason, who even cares bro? Now that we have that established, it would be really stupid if they decided to use Betty Boop in one of these boss fights, even though googling the question, is Betty Boop public domain, literally tells you when she will be in the public domain. Why in the world would they ever do that? Number 17, Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies. Oh. Oh, oh, that's literally just Betty Boop's head on some random body that we couldn't find, but also doesn't matter because it's literally fucking Betty Boop. <laughs> Obviously, this character is not fair game in regards to the public domain, and won't be for another two years. Maybe because the bodies are so different they thought they'd be fine, but that is just straight up Betty Boop's head. So yes, I'm pretty confident that this is another illegal boss in Rubber Hose Rampage. Although Betty's copyright is kind of all over the place due to some dumb legal fights, so who knows if this one actually matters. In terms of the actual boss, Fuck this fight, dude. The bullet spam on this boss in particular is genuinely so unfair. I have no idea how anyone has beaten this. Godspeed to the soldiers that tolerate this game enough to do that. Number 18, The Mad Scientist. This boss features Disney's The Mad Doctor, who is a public domain character due to some weird band shit that happened around the release of the cartoon in 1933. But that isn't the interesting part of this fight. No. The interesting part is that it straight up uses a depiction of Mr. Hyde from a 19... 86 cartoon adaptation of the original book, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Unless there was some weird shit going on here, I have to assume that a cartoon made that recently is not in the public domain yet. The story this cartoon is based on is in the public domain, but that doesn't just automatically make these specific designs public domain as well. I would say this is another case of a very questionable one, but it is definitely closer to being illegal than not at least in my opinion. Number 19, Hall of the Mountain King. The monster featured in this boss fight comes from the summertime comic color cartoon we've already talked about multiple times before. So obviously this guy is public domain. The interesting part of this fight is the actual fight for once. The first phase is absurdly long and easy with the Snow King guy just walking back and forth like every other boss. However, as the music in the background kicks up, so does the speed of the boss, and if you don't kill him before he gets too fast, he becomes Sonic the fucking Hedgehog and bolts back and forth over and over until you die. It caught me very off guard when playing it for the first time. Let's just say that. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. They're cooked! Number 20, A Christmas Carol. 
We actually couldn't find the source of the Santa holding a whip anywhere, however that is not the part of this fight that matters. During one of the phases, Frosty the Snowman appears on screen. This isn't like a new interpretation of the character or something, this is a one to one trace from the original cartoon. Some small details are changed, but still, this one definitely cannot be legal, right? Maybe the small changes are enough in the eyes of the law? I'm not sure. But that doesn't change the fact that it's directly traced from a copyrighted piece of work. I swear to god, this game got lazier with its sources being public domain the further they got into making the game. Anyway, the final boss fight, number 21, is just Pete from Steamboat Willie, which you can probably guess where that lands in terms of being public domain. So, with every boss out of the way, let's wrap this up. Rubber Hose Rampage is an interesting game. It's garbage, of course, but just its existence is so fascinating to me. But my thoughts aside, does Rubber Hose Rampage truly deserve the title of the illegal Cuphead clone? Well, for the most part anyway, surprisingly no. The dev actually did a lot of work making sure that most of the sources being traced here were indeed from the public domain. However, there are enough slip-ups and stupid mistakes here that if people wanted to call it the illegal Cuphead clone, I would not argue with them. Hopefully though, you all at least learn that this game is slightly less illegal than you probably thought before. Once again, I doubt anything's gonna happen to this game or dev, nor do I want anything to happen to them. I'm like 90% sure that they are pretty self-aware with this whole thing, and it's been a funny little thing to talk about on here. If this game was a mobile game, it probably would have gotten almost no attention, since most shit put on the Google Play Store is significantly more copyright infringing than Rubber Hose Rampages. Just some food for thought. Anyway, see you all in 2028 when the game finally gets approved for release on Steam. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully I won't be dead by then, knock on wood. I've been a uh, yeah, and I'll see you all next time.